In this brief video, I will go over the basic features of popular spreadsheet tools such as Microsoft Excel, OpenOffice, and Google Spreadsheets. When you first launch your spreadsheet application, you'll be brought to a blank screen similar to this one. Spreadsheets are groups of individual cells that are each given a unique name based on their location within the sheet. Users can use functions and scenarios that are built into the spreadsheet application to perform calculations and note relationships between certain cells or groups of cells. The first feature I want to discuss relates to the payment function that is built into spreadsheet applications. Using this function, users can calculate their monthly payments on loans or credit cards by providing information regarding the principal, interest rate, and number of monthly payments. As you can see, text can be added to a spreadsheet by simply typing it into a cell. Information is usually limited to one idea per cell. In this example, I have given a total balance of $12,000, an interest rate of 6.5%, and chosen 60 monthly payments. In cell B7, I typed in the payment function and referred to the appropriate cells given the function. By referring to cells in a function rather than typing the actual values, I will be able to later go back and change the values and get a new monthly payment calculation without typing in a new function. Once I have pressed enter or clicked out of this cell to save my function, Excel automatically calculates the value for me rather than showing the function in the cell. By copying the calculation from B7 into the cells to the right, I am able to now play with the numbers while allowing the application to do the calculating for me. In this example, I have reduced the number of monthly payments in one-year increments in order to show how the monthly payment amount increases. In this final example, I have increased the value of the loan by $3,000 in each column to the right to show the increase in monthly payments. I'm sure that many of us can relate to this example with our student loans. Again, by allowing the tool to do the calculations, users are better able to relate the ideas they are learning to real-world scenarios. In this second section, I want to quickly go over the IF function of many spreadsheet applications. Much like the payment calculation, the IF function relates to data from other reference cells and will populate with a given response depending on if the statement is true or false. In this basic example, I have set my B column to say yes if the value in column A is greater than $1, and no if it is less than $1. As seen in the payment calculation, once I have entered a value in column A, the cell to the right is automatically populated given my IF function. By copying the IF function to the cells below, I am able to enter more numbers in column A to determine if they are greater than $1. Although this is an extremely basic example, there are endless possibilities for using this function that would allow students to use higher order thinking skills while categorizing their data. The third and final function of spreadsheet applications that I want to go over is the ability to create charts and graphs. To start, I have input hypothetical data that was collected at three different sites over a seven month period of time. Once all data has been entered to the spreadsheet, you would go to Insert and Select Chart. This example is being done using Microsoft Office for Mac 2008, so the process may be slightly different using other programs. Once you have selected Chart from the Insert menu, the Charts Gallery will open above your spreadsheet, where you can select the type of chart or graph that you would like to create. For this example, I am going to select the Marked Line option. Once you have selected the type of chart you wish to create, it will automatically populate in front of your spreadsheet. The way the data is displayed can be changed using the Chart Properties menu, but in general, the first column will represent the information across the x-axis, and the first row will determine the categories or series that are represented. As seen, spreadsheet applications can offset much of the cognitive load placed on students when performing daily activities and allow them to focus on higher order thought processes. I hope this brief introduction will inspire you to explore the many uses that spreadsheets offer.